Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial video for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. In today's episode we'll be talking about the four movement modes that are currently in the game as well as the benefits and shortcomings of each mode. So what is a movement mode? Uh, basically it's how your character's movement is currently being handled by the game. These are pretty easy to understand. If you're sprinting then your character will be able to move faster than if they were walking. And if you're prone, well you're probably going to be moving a lot slower than if your character was crouching. The the fact that each of them has different speeds associated with them, that's a pretty obvious difference, but there are other effects and we're going to talk about those as we progress through the video. Currently there are four movement modes in the game. We've got walking, running, crouching, and prone. There are two main ways to check what movement mode you are currently using. One is this little letter here next to your speed indicator in the sidebar. The location of this information will depend on your sidebar settings or it may not be displayed at all, but the letter here represents your current movement movement mode, W for walking, R for sprinting and running, etc, etc. Any other way to know your current movement mode would be by the indicator located on or over your character sprite. The indicator display is different depending on your tile set. In Altica, it's represented by these little caret symbols. Walking is the default and as such, most tile sets uh, don't have any kind of indicator for when you're walking. And of course, depending on which tile set you use, they may not have this overlay uh, indicator. It just depends on the tile set. And Altica does have them, which is what I'll be primarily showing in this video. And that's because Altica is the default tile set and what I expect most new players to be using. By default, you toggle through these movement modes by using the double quotes key. This will open a small menu that will allow you to toggle to a specific movement mode. If you're using an old installation, your default control would still be double quotes, but it would instead just toggle through the movement modes instead of opening the menu. Additionally, you can set a specific key bind for each of the movement modes if you want to do so, so you could have a key specifically for running and then one specifically for walking and so on so you would not have to open the movement mode menu. You can check your key binds using the question mark key and then just uh, just search for the relevant controls. This will allow you to rebind them as you like. You can freely switch between the movement modes as often or as little as you like. The act of changing it does not penalize you in any way. It's an instant transition between each mode. That is current to the game as of this moment and it is something that could potentially change in the future. But anyway, let's talk now about the benefits and drawbacks of each of the movement modes. First up, we have walking. As I said, this is the default movement mode. The main benefit of walking is that it has a pretty reasonable pace, so it's not slow like crouching or being prone. Walking also does not consume stamina in the same way that sprinting would. Now, this doesn't mean that you will always recover stamina while you're walking. Outside things can change that. For instance, if you pick up an incredibly heavy item and then you start walking around, you may end up losing stamina. Stamina. There are also effects in the game that can do this, uh, like if you inhaled smoke you would uh, lose stamina as a result of that, but the walking itself does not actually consume stamina. Now the main penalty for walking is that it's not really as fast as sprinting. Although the player walking speed is mostly faster than base level enemies, you will still be easily caught if you only walk and never run. And again, outside things can influence this. Pain, for instance, will drop your speed, so even if you normally would be faster than an enemy, being in a lot of pain might make you slower than them when you're walking. But anyway, walking is a bland thing. It's not exceptional, but it is the movement mode that you will be using the most in the game. And because it does not consume stamina and it does not slow your player in any way, it's often optimal in many situations. Next up, let's talk about sprinting. Sprinting, uh, the main benefit, obviously, is that it increases the player's speed. You move a lot faster when you're sprinting, and while you're running, you will be faster than most of the creatures in the game. Now again, this may not always be true, you know, if you're in pain or you're out of stamina or something like that, you will slow down considerably, and many mutant animals and things like that are faster than you even when you're sprinting. However, it's generally something you want to toggle on when you need to put some distance between you and an enemy. This means you can't just sprint whenever you feel like it. Every step you take will whittle away at your reservoir of stamina, which is a resource that you need to manage. Additionally, as your stamina depletes, your speed is actually penalized. So if you sprint at low stamina, it's going to be a lot slower than if you were sprinting when you had full stamina. As a result, when you first enable this movement mode, you will be quite fast, but you will gradually slow down the longer that you go without regaining your stamina. I highly, highly recommend that you reserve sprinting for emergencies or when you need to put distance between yourself in an enemy. You should not go sprinting around just because you want to get someplace faster. You really need to save it for moments where you're in a pinch. Stamina is a resource that requires careful management, especially when there are enemies around. Since
Since combat also drains your stamina, sprinting constantly or when there's a large group of enemies will eventually result in your reserves running out. And then you'll probably die, or at least you're going to get ripped up somewhat by your enemies. You should sprint in small bursts and return to walking as often as possible to avoid completely depleting your stamina bar. Moving on now, let's talk about crouching. Crouching is a relatively recent addition to the game and it really only has one benefit, which is that it can obscure you from enemy vision. If there's some sort of tile between you and an enemy and that tile has sufficient cover, then your character will be concealed while crouching. You can see how much cover a tile offers by either mousing over it or by pressing the lowercase x key to enter look mode and then move your indicator over that tile. You're looking for this line in the tile description window where it says cover. Now I did ask on discord what the exact cover value is that allows for you to be hidden but I never got an answer. In my testing the lowest cover that I saw that would actually conceal you was 35. The easiest way to know if you're concealed is to simply toggle on your crouching movement mode. If a tile conceals you you will see a change in your vision when you look in that direction. For instance if I'm standing in front of a window and then I I turn on crouching, I will see that my vision changes, indicating that I'm actually being concealed. This means that I can no longer see through that window, but also enemies on the other side would not be able to see me because I'm concealed by that tile. Now I know that's not super informative, but that's the best information I have at the moment. I personally never use crouching, and it's because of the huge drawback, which is that it makes you move much slower than if you were just walking. In my testing, this was double the movement cost of walking, so you're 50% slower when cr when wait a minute, that's a that's a hundred percent slower, right? Math aside, I know that some people really like stealth and look, so do I. Dishonored is like one of my favorite games of all time and who doesn't like a good stealth game? But in Cataclysm, we don't have a way to stealth kill enemies or incapacitate them or anything like that. So in my opinion, crouching is pretty pointless. All it does is conceal you and only in one particular direction where there's a tile between you and the enemy. Now feel free to leave me a comment and tell me why I'm wrong. People always uh, clap back when I talk about crouching. I just personally do not think it's worth the trade-offs. You can use it if you want, there are situations where it can be, um, you know, mildly helpful, but I just don't view it as very valuable. And then let's talk about prone here. If you're not familiar with the word prone, it just means laying on the ground in the way that like a soldier might lie down and crawl forward. Prone is the most recently added movement mode and is still not very fleshed out. So in my opinion, it's actually the least valuable option available to you. It does provide you with the same sort of concealment that we just discussed with crouching. And you can see your vision change when you drop to the ground allowing you to quickly see where you have cover. Now I do not know what coverage value is required for this concealment. Honestly, I didn't even know that this worked currently. Previously, prone did literally nothing but make your character slower. I'm not very familiar with it and it's kind of hard to test what coverage is required. Now regardless of all that though, it does conceal you. As far as I know, that's the only benefit for your standard character. Like that's the only thing that works for everyone. It also adds a huge multiplier to your movement. Obviously, you're crawling across the ground, which is quite slow. Moving while prone will increment the world around you quite a lot, and so if you ever bump the movement key, nearby enemies are going to have a chance to approach and murder you. Now in the future, they do want to make it so that being prone affects your aim speed slash accuracy with firearms, but as far as I can tell, this is not in the game at the moment. The only other benefit at the moment, which is very situational, is using a bipod. This is a modification for firearms, and some guns will spawn with them already attached. When you go prone and fire a weapon with this modification, you will then have reduced recoil. Now I'm not going to explain what recoil is uh, or how it works in this game, but just know that it is a slight buff to using that firearm when you're prone. Those are the only benefits to being prone that I'm aware of, and the fact that there's an enormous movement penalty means you should never really be in this position unless you're using a bipod. And in that situation, you need to be super omega careful that you don't actually hit the movement keys while you're prone. Now as a final note here about being prone, in the game it is possible for your character to have broken legs. If both of your legs are broken, you will fall prone on the ground. In most of your playthroughs, this will never happen, and most likely if it does, you're going to be killed basically immediately due to the horrible movement penalties for being prone. And then coming in here as the editor, we probably should talk about sound at some point in this video. I did leave it out of my initial recording because I don't think that this is a major factor, but it is one of the only other differences between the movement modes 
loads. If you're running, you actually make a decent amount of noise, but that ultimately does not matter because you're only going to be running in situations where it doesn't really matter if you're making noise. Odds are good if you're sprinting, the enemy has already seen you and is locked onto you and etc. For walking, you make a like moderate amount of noise, but it's really not that loud. It barely extends beyond the player and a uh, player scent actually extends past where you would be making noise. So even if you're just walking, the enemy is probably not going to detect you based on your movement sounds of you walking. Most likely they're either going to see you or they're going to get a whiff of your scent and they're going to come at you. Now crouching and prone do make the player make less noise, but the trade-off is that slow movement speed and I really don't think it's worth it. Again, in most situations, walking is not that noisy, so you're probably not going to draw enemies to you other than what was already going to be drawn to you in the first place. So although being prone does in fact make you make significantly less noise, there's just such a penalty for being prone that it's not worth it at all. But anyway, I wanted to mention that I didn't mention it initially and I probably should have, and that's because sound just isn't that important. If, if you're going to be pulling an enemy based on sound, it's going to be because you're smashing furniture or you're getting into combat. The sound of you walking down a sidewalk is not really loud enough to draw enemies to your position, and so it doesn't really matter how much noise your movement mode makes. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to mention it, so we'll get back to the regular video. Anyway, that's the rundown on movement modes that are currently in the game, and to summarize, 90% of your movement should be spent walking and sprinting, if not 100% of the time. Walk whenever you're out of combat, and only use running when you need to put distance between you and an enemy. Remember to toggle back out of sprinting when you are able to, or even just between killing one enemy and moving on to the next one. Stamina management is super important, and you really don't want to waste any of it. Crouching has extremely rare situations where it may be useful, such as moving in front of windows to close them. In other words, you might want to crouch to stay out of sight until you're able to get the curtains closed. And then finally, prone, in my opinion, is completely worthless at the moment unless you're using a bipod and it will probably get you killed by mistake. I highly recommend that you just never use prone unless you have a bipod or until it develops more and has some actual value. And of course, remember that even if you are concealed while you're crouching or prone, there are still other ways in which an enemy can detect you. And I did make a video previously about enemy senses and the different ways that they can track you. If you're crouching and concealed by a window, your scent will still be permeating through, even if the window is closed. So if there's an enemy directly on the other side of the window, it doesn't really matter if they can't see you. They'll still get a whiff of your scent and come bursting through the window. But anyway, I think that's a wrap on this video. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoy the video and or learned something. I, of course, will be back in the future with more tutorials, and I'll see you next time.